morning and happy new year how's everyone this morning beautiful beautiful january 1st sabbath morning for the sun to be shining it just tells us what we've got to look forward to this coming year nothing but praises and sunshine from the lord and now i would like to invite everybody that if you're new here, please let us know. We would love to get to know you. If you need help, just let us know. We're here to serve you. And now I'd like for everyone to greet everyone online and in the sanctuary. Whistle, wave, shout. This one's. Now, can you hear me? <laughs> I just, I just got to get my, my big girl's voice up. <laughs> okay. We did our greeting, so now we'll have a praise chorus, and would you please stand, and we're singing Nothing is Impossible. It's in the blue book and number 238. protocol this morning because Pastor Mark is ill and will not be here. So a, a couple things have changed, but instead of having the sermon, our own Miss Doris Brunty will be giving us a uh, devotion in place of the sermon from Pastor Mark, and I'm sure you enjoy it because she's a, a lovely preacher and teacher. And so we'll get to get, we'll go ahead. Are there any prayer concerns? Pastor Mark. Pastor Mark. <laughs> we need him back. <laughs> okay, let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear gracious Father in heaven, thank you so much for this beautiful day to start the new year off with all your blessings that I know are to come. And Lord, just thank you for being with us, for enabling, enabling us to gather together here, Lord, to hear and learn your word. And Lord, just be with all that are in need. You know their names and you know their needs, Lord. Be with those that are suffering through illnesses, Lord. Be with them and their families. Help them get through the trials, we know you will, Lord. And Lord, just be with us all because we all need you, Lord, whether we want to admit it at times or not. There's not a minute that goes by we don't need you. So Lord, in response to that, we would like now to pray the prayer that your beloved son taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And before we get with children's chat, 
there's been some changes in the schedule for this following week. As usual, we'll have Sunday school after the worship service this morning. But the board meetings, the trustee, the CE board, finance board, and deacon board have all been rescheduled from Tuesday, January the 3rd to Tuesday, January the 10th. The business meeting, there'll be no business meeting on the 4th. That will be rescheduled for the 11th. And the choir practice will not, there'll be no choir practice this Wednesday. Correct, Sarah? Correct. Okay. And I think that is all that have been changed. But on January the 7th at 8 a.m., the men's prayer breakfast will be at Lightburn's Restaurant in Jane Lou. On January the 8th at 9 o'clock, there'll be breakfast in the fellowship hall. At 9.30 will be worship service with communion. And at 10.30 on January the 8th, there'll be Sunday school for all ages. At 5 p.m. on January the 8th, the FBC Evening Kids Group, all kids pre-K to fourth grade are invited to come join us. Then on Tuesday, January the 10th at 12 noon, the Lisa Simmons uh, Circle will meet. Then on Wednesday, January the 11th at 6 o'clock will be the choir practice. And then at 7, we will not have the Bible study. That will be the business meeting. Then Sunday, January the 15th, at 9 o'clock a.m., there will be our breakfast downstairs. And then on Wednesday, January the 25th at 7 p.m., Ed Rogers will be here to explain about the church health checkup, first steps to remissioning. Ed will talk about the different areas reviewed in the church to help us improve. And we all should try to attend that because... It, it, I do feel it probably will be very helpful for the church and for the community. So now we will get on with children's chat with Melissa Skinner. anything special for the new year? Did you do anything fun last night? Last night we had a party for New Year. You did? Did you make it till midnight and watch the ball drop? No. No, I saw them. It's hard. Adeline took a nap, but then a power nap, and she was up to watch the ball drop. So what year is it now? Do you know? We just went out with 2022, and now we have 2023. Right, right. So today, I want to talk to you about a couple socks I have. Oh, when yeah. you first look at this sock, do you see anything that looks different about it? No. What if I put my hand in here? What do you oh, see there? Oh. A hole, right? What do you think I should do with this sock now? Throw it in the trash. Throw it in the trash. It's not really going to be any of use to anybody else now that has a big hole in the bottom of it, huh? I like to keep things as long as I can, but once it gets a big hole in it, there's really not much that we can do, huh? So, now what about this one? This one look good? Yeah. Let me put my hand in here and let's see if this one looks. See any holes in there? No. No, this one looks much better, right? It's new. Yep, it's new, a perfect condition. No, I think th these are actually Brody's socks, and I think he just hasn't worn this one yet. Brody likes to put a lot of holes in his socks. But it's ready for me to use it, right? And so sometimes I have to get rid of the old ones, right, with the holes in them, so that I can replace it with something new that's more comfortable for my feet. And as we head into this new year, I want you guys to think about what you can get rid of in your life that's old and change it into something new and better. 
In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19, it says, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So what old things in us do you think God wants us to get rid of so that he can make us new again? Are there any things that you think you could change or you could improve upon to be better for God? Well, I can give you some ideas. He wants us to get rid of our old bad attitudes, so maybe when we're not listening or obeying like we should. He wants to, us to put all of those things aside and the things that we do wrong um, so that we can become new again and have new good attitudes that show love for him and that show love for other people. He wants us to get rid of our old bad habits and mistakes so that we can do the good things that he created us for. Because that's the ultimate goal, right? To show others Jesus' love through our actions so that they'll come to know him too. So let's go ahead and pray, and then we're going to go back in extended session, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this, okay? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, we thank you for not giving up on us, even when we do bad things and we have bad attitudes, Lord. We pray that you always are there for us, for us to come and repent to you so that you can help us become new again. We pray that you'll cleanse us from our old ways of thinking and our old ways of doing things and teach us how to think and do the new things that honor and please you so that others will see your love through our actions and our words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Is ready to come back. <laughs> And now would you please stand and we'll sing hymn number 80, The Lily of the Valley.
the officer word of prayer. Father, well, we thank you for this glorious work today morning. We thank you for another opportunity to be in your house. We pray that you be with us through this service this morning, Father. We very thank you for coming here this morning to your will. Father, we thank you for all your many blessings. We especially thank you for the gift of your son and the sacrifice you made for us. Now, together with these tithes and offerings, we confess that we need you for your glory and expectation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. much for the gifts that you give us every day and Lord it's our time to give back to you we pray Father God that you will bless the, the tithes and offerings that were given here this morning we pray Father God it will be used for the uplifting of your kingdom and Lord we'll give you praise and glory for what you're going to do in our lives this year in Christ's name we pray amen
choir. That got my blood a pumping a little bit. Victory in Jesus. Amen. Um, I'm going to do a, a prayer, but before we do it, we know Pastor Mark is watching us on live stream. So at the count of three, I want all of us to say, get well, Pastor Mark. We love you. You ready? One, two, three. Get well, Pastor Mark. We love you and we miss you. There's a stool here. I'm going to try to stand up on it. Whoa. Maybe not. <laughs> there. I just kicked it out of the way. Remind me it's back there, Joshua. <laughs> okay. I want to go to the Lord in prayer, and I know we have many requests that's on our heart, that's unspoken, you know. And we can come to the throne of grace and we can talk to our Lord Jesus Christ about anything. How many of you had a rough year last year? Several of us had some rough years. But we're starting a new year and happy new year to everyone. But I want to uh, go to the Lord in prayer and just lift up not only those that are unspoken on our heart, those that are on our prayer list that we have, and I'll tell you, it gets bigger and bigger every day, but also for the new year and for our church. And I'm excited about what's going to happen. Think a year ago, we didn't have community meals. And I mean, things that we're doing in this church is just unreal. And it's just, uh, I know God is wanting to move, and he is going to move. All right, let's go to prayer. Father, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be able, Lord, to just to worship you here on this beautiful, beautiful day. What a wonderful time to start the new year off on the Sabbath day. Lord, I just thank you for everything that you've done in my life and in the lives of those that are sitting here. We pray, Father God, that you will just reach down and you will touch each heart. We pray, Father God, that you will open up ears, that you'll take the spiritual blinders off, Father. And Father God, we just ask you that everything will be done according to your will. We lift you up. We lift you. It's not about us. It's all about you. Father God, I ask you, Lord, that you will be with our military and our veterans, Father. Be with our missionaries, Father. Be with those first responders and those that are in the hospital and nursing homes. We pray, Father God, you'll be with our schools and our colleges, our students and our teachers and professors. Lord, there's just so many. We pray, Father God, for our leaders of our country. We pray, Father God, that spiritual insight will be given to each one. Now, Father, we just uh, right now want to uh, just worship you and thank you for what an awesome, awesome God you are, for sending your only son to save us, to die for us, to cleanse us from all of our sins. But Lord, it doesn't end there. You have promised that you're coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. And I thank you, Father God, that your promises are sure and amen. In Christ's name we pray, and amen. Amen. If you do have your Bibles with me, I'm going to be talking in 2 Timothy 1, 6 through 12. I... Um, when Pastor Mark called me, and I, indeed I think it's a privilege to stand behind here, it's I don't take it lightly, and he asked me to just teach, bring a word as, uh, as far as uh, a devotion, whatever, and I went through all my devotional books, and I just couldn't find anything, and I said, right here's my devotional book, it's the word of God. And so I found something in there, and if I could, I would say, stir up the gift, stand up, and speak out. That's the word I would think that the Lord would want us to take in. 
Now, we all got Christmas gifts. How many of you got everything you wanted? Everything. I don't see a hand up. So evidently, there's some things you wanted, but you did not get. But you know, one thing I think about is the biggest gift that we celebrated was Jesus in the manger. But our biggest gift was the cross. And our bigger gift is that he's coming back for us. Now, I get into biblical numerology. That's a big word for a old Boone County girl. But um, numbers mean something in God's perspective. 2020, how many of you remember 2020? Boy, we don't want to remember it with the COVID and everything. But in God's way, it means perfect vision and wisdom. 2021 meant spiritual perfection and great wisdom. You know, seven is God's number. So three times seven is 21. So we ought to have been really abundantly blessed with great wisdom. 2022 is marked and sealed. 2023 is bringing it to a close. Now, I like next year, 2024, is heavenly pattern of worship. 2025 is grace upon grace upon grace upon grace, because five is grace. So 25, five times five, 25 is grace. That's what we got to look forward to this year, is to bring some things to a close and to also next year have a heavenly pattern of worship. And then on the next year, grace. You said, well, are you really looking forward? I'm looking forward to what God can do, not only in my life, but in others' life. Old things are passed away. New things are here in 2023. Isaiah 43, 18, 19 says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? So with that, I want to get into the scripture that I'm using. You said, well, how is that mixed with stir it up? Let me read the scripture here. In 1 Timothy, second chapter, and we start with verse 6. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying of hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel, according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which is given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. But now has revealed by the appearing of our Lord Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I, this, I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I have known whom I have believed and persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him and to that day. May God add a blessing to his word. Paul's writing to Timothy. He's like the second generation here. And Paul's in Roman prison. And he's telling him, I'm remembering you, Timothy, in my prayers every night. And I'm thinking about your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. Thank the Lord for godly grandparents, godly grandmothers and mothers. I praise the Lord that if you were brought up in a Christian home with godly things, that's a legacy. That is a legacy. And I thank it. All right, then it says, stir it up, stand up and speak out. Now, to stir means to mix something. Now, if I had a bowl up here and I just started being, how many of you ladies like when you make a meringue? Okay, and you're going to just beat it a couple times, will that make a meringue? No, you've got to beat and you've got to stir it. 
Well, here he's telling us to stir it up, the gifts that you have in you. All of you have some gifts. You said, well, I know maybe at once I did. You still have a gift, whether it's encouragement, reaching out to people, just, just uh, administration, a teacher, a preacher, a janitor, anything that is secretary, anything that is for the choir director, a piano player, the choir members, anybody, you have a gift. Every one of you in here have a gift to the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe me? Say amen. Do you believe me? All right, it won't hurt my feelings, okay? But I, I feel that the Lord wants to stir us up some of our gifts. Now, some of my gifts have just been maybe on the shelf a little bit, and I haven't been using them lately, though. I, I will praise the Lord that I'm able to teach, and I love to teach the Word of God. I take it seriously because it is serious. But the stir is to mix or add, to cause movement. Now, when you're stirring something, you're just not going to go, you're going to stir it, aren't you? All right. I hope that the Holy Spirit is going to do a little bit of stirring this morning. And that, so get ready. Also, stir means to arouse from sleep or indifference. Arouse from sleep. You ever try to wake somebody up? And you just kind of shake them a little bit, stir them up. Get up, get up, Josh. Stir you a little bit. I don't know if Sarah does that, does she? I get it myself. Okay. <laughs> to excite means to stir. To stir. Now stand up. Once we stir that gift that's within us, we need to stand up. And to stand up is to rise. Maintain an upright position. Too many of our fellow Christians, not in this church, I'm not pointing nobody out, that we walk around with our head down. Oh, the world. What's happening to the world? Our head is down. And we just think, oh, what's going to happen? I don't know if I got enough money. I don't know if I had enough food. I'm saying stand up with your shoulders back and know that your God will supply all your riches according to his, all your needs. Apply. Let me go back. My God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. He will do that. He wants us not to only stir up the gift within us, but he wants to stand, have us stand up straight and say, hey, I can do the things through Christ who strengthens me. To stand up, to maintain an upright position, to take a specific position or an attitude. I like the words, a gra attitude of gratitude. How many of you are thankful? Wow, I see. Okay, hands are starting to come up. Are you thankful to be here in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> that comes to the next one, to speak up. Not only stir the gift within you, stand up and go forth and do it. Now you need to speak it, to talk, utter words, express your thoughts and feelings. Like, how many of you know me that I usually say what I think? <laughs> Kathy's going, yeah. And Cindy's back here, you know, waving at me. Because I believe that what God puts on my heart is what I need to share with others. What, whatever it is, I need to share. And it's like I, uh, my daddy used to tell me, he might have got you, give you a tongue like a frog and big frog eyes, but he didn't keep your mouth shut. He, he says you constantly have to tell about it. Even when I was real small, I always wanted to praise the Lord. Now, did I stay that way when I was little? No. I kind of went away from it, but God brought me back. And he brought me back in his love and his grace. So am I going to be quiet about what he'd done for me, that he took me an old sinner, and that he took me out of that life, and he gave me new life? No, I'm not going to be quiet. 
I'm going to tell the people that I know about his love, his mercy, his grace, oh, his unmerited favor. Timothy stepped out boldly and proclaimed the, the gospel. He said, I, rem I remind you to stir up that gift, rekindle the embers. L Come on and stir it up. Look at all your neighbors next to you and say, she's talking to you. <laughs> really, I'm talking to all of you. Stir it up. You know, I love to camp. And one way to camp, or if you have a fire, and when it starts getting down to the little embers, what do you want to do? If you want a bigger fire, you want to stir it up, and you want to add some stuff to it, right? Well, that's what I'm trying to get you to do today, is to stir up what's within you. Be, fan that flame. Fan that flame. If I want a fire to go, if this was lit, and I want it to be higher, I would fan it, wouldn't I? That's what I want you to do. Fan what's ever inside of you, the gifts. In 1 Timothy 4, 14, it says, Neglect not the gift within thee. There's time to do some stirring. Rekindle it. Not for our glory, but all for his. All for his. And he's not given us a spirit of fear. Now, I do an acronym for fear. False evidence appearing real. That's what fear is. Power, boldness. He's given us not fear, but power, force, strength of the Holy Spirit. He's given us love. What's our greatest commandment? To love one another, right? To love him first and love one another. Also a sound mind. Now, sometimes I wonder if I have a sound mind. But when we're talking about a sound mind, we're talking about the mind of Christ. Uh, a few years ago, WWJD, everybody said, what would Jesus do? I still use that sometimes when I am thinking, now, what would Jesus do in this situation? What would Jesus say in this situation? What would he do? You need to have a mind of Christ and the wisdom of Christ. Be bold. Don't be ashamed. Uh, give a testimony. You know, Paul says in Romans 1, 16, for an I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation and to everyone who believes in him, the Jews first and then the Greeks. A testimony. Be a partaker of sufferings. Christ will give us strength. 2 Timothy 2, 3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Can you remember, as a, we don't sing it very much, but stand up, stand up for Jesus, you soldiers of the cross. You see one not in the choir saying that anymore. <laughs> stand up, stand up. We used to do the little kids come to stand up, stand up for Jesus. So we need to stand up for him. We need to stir. We need to stand up. We need to speak out. Uh, verse 10 says, Now it's been revealed by revealing of Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality. We don't have to fear death. 1 Corinthians 15, 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? We don't have to fear it. We need to speak up. Tell everybody what God has done in your life and a testimony. I'll tell you, it encourages people. When I hear somebody's testimony, how they have healed them or how they brought them out of a financial crisis, that strengthens me. That strengthens me to say, I know my God is able to do abundantly more than I ever expect him to do. Stir up the gift. It might cause you to change your position a little bit. It might even um, excite you a little bit. And it might get you just from a sleepy kind of worship. You know... Us Baptists are really good. I like to praise and lift my hands. Probably a lot of you have seen that. And praise. But sometimes we're so afraid to praise our Lord. It says in the Bible, lift holy hands to the Lord. I always say when you're like this, you're a half mass. 
you know, I want to be full mass. I want to be praise him. I want to praise him. Stand up. Maintain an upright position. What's your body language, like I said? What's your attitude in worship? In church and in your community. Oh, I've got to go to church this morning. It's Sunday morning. Or are you saying, I am excited to come to the house of the Lord. And I hope you can come one day with me too. I'm inviting you. You know, I've been doing that to a couple of people at where I live in the apartment buildings. And I'm going to say, hopefully they're coming around and one day. They may be coming in here. And that, that's not for my glory. That's for his glory. His glory. Speak up. Share what Jesus is doing in your life. Express your feelings. Talk about thoughts and miracles and everything he has. I hope this little devotion, whatever you want, teaching has helped you a little bit to know that the word of God is alive and true. And he really, for some reason, he wants us to stir up. Good things are going to happen in 2023 here at First Baptist. I believe that. We've come a long way from 2020, haven't we? And that was a year of what? Perfect vision? Don't think so. We had COVID to deal with and everything. Look what the church is doing pre COVID and after post COVID right now. Yes, it's still out there, but we're able to meet. We're able to be able to fellowship, share meals together. We're able to help the community and feed them. I'm just excited about what's going to happen in this church. It makes me just want to go, woo! Okay, sorry, Pastor Mark. <laughs> but it makes me just really want to shout hallelujah to our Lord and Savior. So I'm going to ask you. We ask Jesus to stir up the gifts within you in 2023 to build up his kingdom. We ask him. I'm closing. Can you stand up and raise your hand and heart in thankfulness and say, thank you, Jesus. I made it through another year and I'm looking forward to what you're going to do this year. I'm thankful that I'm alive and well. I'm thankful I can stand in this church and lift my hands to you and praise you, for you are worthy of all praise and all glory. And finally, are you open to some testimonies to speak up? God been good to, good to you. Are you ready to speak up? Now, I'm going to read one more thing, and then I'm going to ask you to do something. Oh no, he's going to ask us to do something. I see it now. This is what I'm looking forward to in 2 Timothy 4 and 7. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who love his appearing, his second coming. Amen? Amen. All right. I'm going to take a few minutes, and then I'm going to close in prayer. Does somebody have a testimony that would like to? Has God been good to you this week? Has he done something for you this week? This is different. I'm different. Come on. God's been good to at least one person. Okay. Love each and every one of you, and I, I'm, I am a newcomer into this church, and I'm just, uh, I'm overwhelmed. But I love God's love, but I love that you all showing me. Amen. And I'm just, I'm just happy. <laughs> I just love the Lord. I love Him. I love Him. He, he loves me so much, and He loves each and every one of us. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? 
it won't hurt my feelings. And in fact, it'll just really kind of boost you a little bit. Anybody else? Nobody else? All right. God's a good God. He's been good to me. And like 2022 has been a hard year. Even from 2020 on, it's been kind of hard. But I'm looking forward to what he's going to do this year and then next year. And uh, I hope that I'm around to, if not, I won't be, if I'm not here, you know I'm in heaven shouting and praising Jesus. Uh, I have a birthday this month. I'll be 71. My son said, no, Mom, you're 17. Just put it backwards. <laughs> I said, well, okay, I wouldn't want to be 17 again, but, um, you know, I earned this gray hair, and it's my crown of glory, and uh, I'm thankful for the life that he has given me, and I hope that uh, I can continue to serve him. I hope that I've stirred something up in you, that you can go home and say, and, you know, I think I could help here. I could do this, or I could do that. Uh, you know, we had a great encourager that would send cards to people, Marianne, and we need, we need someone to step up and be the encourager, you know, to send cards to people. We've lost some loved ones that we just need to fill their shoes a little bit. And young ones, there's an, I see one young gentleman in here. God isn't done with you. There's things that you can do for his glory, whether you're young or you're old. Stir it up. Stand up. Speak it. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for the time that we had here, Lord. I pray, Lord, that the word, Father God, went out and that, Father God, it stirred something within us. We love you. We thank you. We praise you, Jesus. We ask you, Father God, if there's someone that don't know you, Father God, that this is the time, Lord, that they start a new year with a new faith. Lord, increase our faith. Increase our heart size, Lord, for the love for others. And Lord, we will give you glory and praise. Again, be with Pastor Mark, his mother, and all the family that's been with this COVID. Put a hedge of protection around them. Put a hedge of protection around each one that's here this morning. Lord, I pray blessings, peace, and grace upon them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, let's turn. Page 226. <laughs>
hearts and minds clear. Thank you, Pastor Mark, for uh, letting me have this privilege of being able to teach a little bit. I thank the church also and the deacon board for it. So, uh, all hearts and minds clear, so let's dismiss. Father, we thank you. We praise you. I pray blessing, blessings upon each one that's here. Give them strength throughout this week. And Father God, bring us back at the next appointed time. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you.